In this video, we will look at a few examples to practice working with dependent events. In example A, it says, what's the probability of drawing two sevens from a standard deck of cards if once one card is chosen, it is not replaced? So in this case, we have two events, we're drawing two cards, and we're thinking about what's the probability that we get two sevens. The key thing we have to notice here is that once one card is chosen, it is not replaced. So the probability of getting a seven in the second event will be different from the probability of getting a seven in the first event. So these two events are dependent on one another. So the probability of the first seven would be four out of 52 because there are four sevens in a deck of 52 cards total. And this reduces to 113. Now, once we've drawn one card, whether or not it is a seven, there's only 51 cards left. So when you're thinking about the probability of the second seven, we're going to think about out of 51 cards. And assuming we did get a seven on the first try, it means that there are only three sevens left in the deck, as opposed to four where there were what there were originally. So the top number in our fraction will be three. So the probability of the second seven is three out of 51. So these two events are dependent because these two probabilities are different. If the two events were independent, those probabilities would be the same no matter what. So now we can actually use the multiplication rule because we have revised our second probability and didn't just say four out of 52 again, in order to figure out the probability of two sevens, getting a first, first a seven and second a seven. And that will just be 1 13th, which is four out of 52, times three out of 51, which ends up being one out of 221. All right, let's go to example B. A box contains five red marbles and five purple marbles. What is the probability of drawing two purple marbles and one red marble in succession without replacement? So that's again means once you've drawn a marble, you don't put it back and you couldn't pick it again. And so the total number of marbles gets lower each time after you've picked a marble. So in this case, there's actually three different events. We're thinking about drawing three marbles and we want purple, then purple, and then red. So for the first marble to be purple, there are five purple marbles in the box and 10 marbles total, because five red and five purple. So the probability of the first marble being purple is five out of 10. Once we've chosen that marble, there will now be nine marbles left in the box. So the probability that the second is purple will be four out of nine. So the 10 went down to nine because there's only nine marbles left, and the five went down to four because if we chose a purple marble the first time, there's only four purple marbles left. Then the probability that the last one is the third marble is red, will be five, because there are five red marbles, out of eight, because there are now eight marbles left in the box. Because we've revised our probabilities, we can use the multiplication rule. And so if we want to figure out the probability of all of this happening, that would mean we just multiply all three together. So the probability of purple, then purple, then red, would be five out of 10, times four out of nine, times five out of eight. And when you multiply that all out and reduce, you get five out of 36. So the probability of this happening, getting a purple marble and then a purple marble and then a red marble is five out of 36.